show. <laughs> Do this. Do Take one. <laughs> Hi everybody, I am back with an educational video. It has been a hot minute because I have had so much going on in my life. As most of you know, I started my own hair extension company. And if you didn't know, you can check out my previous video where I explained that. I will be doing a video very soon, um, going over each color in my brand, all of the other things I've come out with, like a tape-in remover, tape-in tabs, a placement guide, all of these cool things that I kind of came up with for my hair extension brand. So if you were interested in that, let me know in the comments below. As for today, I am going to be doing a blonding video, and I have been using some new techniques for foil placement. I have been using some new techniques for foil placement, blonding methods. I have been using a new lightener that you guys don't know about. So I have just kind of changed the way I've done blondes lately, and I've been loving it. So if you guys are interested in watching this video, stay tuned. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so these are the formulas I'm going to be using today on her hair, and my lightener is Goldwell OxyCure. I have been using this so much lately. I love it. It's gentle on the hair. It gets amazing lift. It's incredible. So I'm going to be using that with 20 volume and Olaplex, and for her low light, I'm going to be doing 7N in a Loxy and 10 volume. Rose with you Can't remember the last time I went without you For this video, I really wanted to focus on foil placement, so as you can see in the back here, I have two sections on the bottom and then an upside down triangle on the top, and then towards the front of the face, I just go off of her part, and I have two sections up here. This is how I've been doing it a lot lately, and I really love it, especially around the face. I do a lot of detailed work, so I will show you what I do when I get towards that. All right, you guys, this is gonna be a long video. I've got my popcorn and my Dr. Pepper, and I suggest you do the same, settle in. I really tried to cut it down as much as I could. Right now, it's at about 33 minutes, and I'm hoping as I edit, I can get it down even less, because I know that not everyone wants to watch a 30-minute video, but if you do, then you may be in luck. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm doing down here is I'm starting on one section of the hair, and I like to work in a diagonal up the head, and I am doing three highlights to one low light, and as you can see, I'm using my board right here doing baby lights. I got this board, and it's amazing. It's a highlighting board that I actually got from Habit Salon. Um, one of the stylists used it when I took a class there, and she and her husband, I guess, make them, and she mailed me one. So it's been amazing, and it's helped me a ton. So I am using that board because when you're at the bottom of the head, it's a hard shape to foil on. And so I use my board to give me a sturdier base, and I talk about this in a lot of my videos, so I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but it seriously does help so much to prevent your voils from slipping and to make sure that you get your product on there really well. So as you can see right here, I am just doing highlights up the head, then I will do one low light, and I will just continue up on both sides until I reach that triangle. I get asked all of the time what color brushes I use and with colors like this, baby lights, highlights, I actually use the Goldwell brushes and you can see me using them right here. It's kind of hard to see because I'm moving so fast but they are the Goldwell color brushes and for her highlights I'm doing just the regular size tint brush and for her low lights I actually use the smaller one and I feel like the smaller one's good for low lights. It's also really good for like money pieces or detailed work around the face and ever since I've been using the Goldwell brushes I can't use anything else. They are are incredible they are really soft I love them the way they glide onto the hair is really great so I definitely recommend those
Now I am done with the two sides and the back, so I'm starting on that upside down triangle. And now that I'm up to this part of the head, I'm not using my board anymore. I'm just freehand foiling, and I'm just doing very fine baby lights. As you can see, they're very thin sections, and honestly, most of the time they end up looking like slices because they are so thin. So I'm just continuing that same pattern in this triangle zone. doing a low light and I'm doing the 7N because I don't want it to be too ashy or too warm. My go-to for a low light is usually 7N, 7G, especially on blonde hair, but her hair pulls extremely warm so I just did the 7N without the G this time and I'm just doing that every third foil like I said before. Okay, you guys, this is my absolute favorite part of foiling. This is where the money pieces come into play. So as you can see, I am going off of her natural part, and I am doing this little slice right above the ear, and I am doing it as a slice. So I am just full-on bleaching that little spot. When you do slices like this, you have to make sure that the hair is very thin and the section you're grabbing is very fine because if it's too thick, it's not going to process right and it's going to end up too warm. And especially around the face, we want to make sure these lift out as much as possible. So as you can see, I did that one section and then above it, I'm going to do another slice, very tiny. You can see that I split it in half right there. Then I'm just going to continue this around her hairline and I'm going to make sure that I focus very heavily around her hairline so that we can have brighter pieces when she pulls her hair back. And the main reason for money pieces is so that your client doesn't feel like they have regrowth when you're doing a rooted look. This is going to make it look more sun-kissed, more natural. This is going to give them that Pinterest picture that everyone brings in. And I used to just do money pieces focused in the bang area, kind of like the mohawk area. But I've been doing it this way because I've kind of realized that if you do the money pieces all the way around the head, they can tossle their part, they can part it left, right, middle, wherever they want to, and they're still going to have those bright pieces around the face no matter where they part. And when they pull their hair back, it's going to be bright around the face no matter what. So I like to do it this way now because I feel like it looks more natural no matter how the client does their hair. And as you can see in this little area, I'm doing a small money piece right here. And a little trick I like to do is flipping the foil backwards like this. And it gives you a little more control with that lightener. So that's something I do around this section of the hair. The other day, me and one of my stylists were talking. And we were kind of like, why do they call it money pieces? Because I feel like a lot of times us stylists have our own lingo and the clients will get confused if we're like oh do you want a money piece and they're like what does that mean do I have to spend more money to get that and it's kind of confusing for clients but we were kind of thinking you know they call it a money piece because it makes your hair look expensive and that is so true these colors they're lived in they're natural they're low maintenance but they also have that expensive look to them if they are done correctly so I don't know if that's why they're called money pieces but we thought that was kind of clever and educate your clients on the lingo we use in the salon so that they understand what they're getting and if they understand that these colors are beautiful gorgeous lived in low maintenance at the same time keeping them blonde they are going to love it because yes sometimes these services cost a little more since they are you know a more specialized technique but if they know that they can come in every six to eight months instead of every six to eight weeks they're going to be all for it Okay, and now that I'm done with those money pieces around the face, I'm just going to weave up like normal, just doing my baby lights and the highlights and low lights. And then once I get to like the parietal ridge and I'm like almost to the top of her head, I'm just going to do highlights and I'm going to drop the low lights just because we want it to be brighter up top. I don't want any like chunky looking low lights throughout the top of the hair. And another thing when you're doing low lights is it wouldn't look chunky because I don't weave them chunky, but sometimes low lights with the contrast can look that way. So make sure that when you're doing your low lights, especially it's very thin, fine baby lights as well because you want them to look as natural as possible. Okay, now I'm picking back up with the money pieces, and as you can see here, I'm pulling out little baby hairs, and the reason I'm not putting lightener on those is because if I did, since they're shorter, it would draw more attention to them. So I just picked those out, and now I'm doing another slice. 
So as you guys can see here, I am just heavily slicing around the face so that we have that thick money piece right in her bang. And it's gonna look beautiful. Sometimes it's really scary to do money pieces if you haven't done them before or if you're not used to them because you're like, I don't want it to look like a thick tiger stripe or a skunk stripe, which we all want to avoid. But if done the right way, it's gonna look beautiful. So I'm just focusing these slices around the face and then I will transition back into baby lighting. section coming up that I want to talk about. So when you get to the very top section and you're foiling, you're going to run into the back part where you finished foiling. And there's this awkward piece of hair that if you weave it, you're going to have like three foils in a row. So as you can see right here, I just left it out. So there's a subsection and that scares a lot of people just to leave a brown piece of hair out. But I promise you when it's all done, it's going to look great. <laughs> Okay, and I am just doing the same thing on the other side of her head, and I just wanted to go over a little bit what I'm actually doing on her. So we are doing a rooted blonde, which is awesome, and it's so funny because we have to fit so many foils in to get a rooted look, and it's just how it goes with baby lights, the more the better. And since we're doing a rooted look, when I'm doing my baby lights, I'm not necessarily trying to get up to the root. So as you can see here, I didn't start right at the root, I started a little lower. With the slicing, I do go all the way to the root because I want it brighter around the face. But with the regular baby lights, I'm not necessarily trying to get super high to the root. So with that being said, it's a little less precise than regular highlighting. But you can still use this method and this foil technique with regular highlighting. I use it all the time. You just do it closer to the root. And sometimes if you want a brighter look and you don't want the rooted look, you can do thicker sections than baby lights, if that makes sense. So keep in mind that if you're doing something like this, baby lights work great. Baby lights also work great if you're doing really blonde, but sometimes I will do thicker highlights if I want a brighter look.
right, she is now fully foiled. Here's a little bit of the foil placement I did around the head so you can see. If you have any questions about this placement, please feel free to ask me in the comments and I will explain anything you have questions about. So she's been processing about 25 minutes. That low light's looking great and the blondes are processing super, super well. Look, she's like almost white. So we're gonna rinse out this back sooner than the top and then we'll let the top finish processing and then we will rinse her out. It's now time to mix up her root smudge and I am going to be using Shades EQ 6N Equal Parts with Processing Solution. I've been using shades a lot lately for root smudges and it's become my absolute favorite. I leave it on about 5 to 15 minutes depending on the client. With her, I think I'm going to leave it on about 10 minutes. So I'm just mixing it up with my scale here. I'm getting about 2 ounces total and then we're going to go to the bowl and put this on her root. All right, as we are pulling out these foils, look how blonde around the face she is, you guys. I love it. This is going to be so beautiful and sun-kissed. I just can't wait. This is like my favorite part, seeing how they look out of the foils. So we're going to go ahead and root smudge her to soften um, her look a little bit, and then we will tone her ends, and the end result is just so amazing, and you guys are going to love it. Okay, now we are ready for her root smudge. And when I root smudge my clients, my process is to maxi wash them first to get all of the bleach residue out. Then I coat their ends in Olaplex so they're sitting in a treatment while their root smudge is processing. And I T-part her and I'm starting in the back and I worked my way around the perimeter and now I'm just going inside of the hair with small sections and I take it down about an inch or two. Rose with you Can't remember the last time I went without you Okay, around the face is where smudging is key. You get to decide how bright your client's money pieces end up looking. So I am going around the perimeter once again, and when I get to her money pieces, I just barely tap it in. I'm not spreading it out an inch or two like I did in the past in the back of the head. I'm just tapping it out so that it stays brighter around the face. And it's totally up to you. You could leave those money pieces out of the root smudge if you wanted to, just so they are really bright. But for me, I personally like to at least tap them a little bit and then take it further down in the rest of the hair. That way it softens the money pieces, but they're still bright. And that's just kind of what I like to do. So I did that and now I'm just working my way down the head. But you guys can already tell that that money piece is a lot thicker than the rest of the baby lights. And it's so beautiful once it's actually done and dry. You guys are going to love it. Okay, and after I'm done smudging, I take a wide tooth comb and just comb through that smudge and diffuse it down into the rest of the hair. But since the Olaplex is on it, it acts as a barrier, so it's not going to create any splotchiness, which is amazing, but it helps soften the blend a little more. And I like to use the Sam Via Wide Tooth Comb. It's my favorite comb, and it's the one I've found the best results with. So I would highly recommend you guys pick that up if you do a lot of smudging. I'm the worst. I totally forgot to film myself mixing up the toner, but I am using Shades EQ, surprise, surprise, and it is 9V, 9P, 9T equal parts, so it's one ounce of each. So it is three ounces of toner, three ounces of processing solution, bringing it to six ounces total. And I know that's a lot for her hair, but I really wanted an equal amount of all three of those tones. V, P, and T is like my favorite combination ever for that like icy, ashy blonde. And it kind of depends on the client. On some clients, it will go too ashy, but on her, since she pulls really warm, it's like the perfect combination to give her that bright, ashy blonde. 
Okay, and I get this question all the time when I do root smudge videos, and it's something I guess I usually just gloss over and don't explain very well, but I do leave her root smudge on while I'm doing the toner. So I let her root smudge sit for about 10 minutes, and then I put the toner on her ends, and I'm just working it through all together. You can see here that I kind of scrub her scalp, and I massage that root into the ends. And the reason I do that is because it helps diffuse any lines, and it kind of smushes all the product together to give it a nice blend. You can rinse the root smudge out, if you feel like it's going to go too dark. This is just the way I like to do it. So sometimes I'll even put the toner on when the root smudge has been sitting about eight minutes. So that's the way it is 10 minutes total. So it's totally up to you. Use your own discretion, but this is the way I do it with 95% of my clients. Woohoo! I'm so proud of myself. After editing, I was able to cut off like 10 minutes off this video. I'm so happy. It's still a 22 minute video, but I hope you guys learned something from it. I felt like everything I kept in it was super important, and I hope that you guys got some education somehow. So now you can just see me giving her a blowout. She has pretty curly hair, so the sleeker the better. And then I'm going to give her a few beach waves and take some pictures. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good day.